except one. Go to the mall and buy those beautiful long sleeve shirts that every girl wants. Step two. Get those Miss Me jeans. You deserve to have those expensive high brand jeans that every girl would love. Three. Make sure the sweater covers everything he did to you. Four. Try on the jeans first. Make sure he won't have a problem with how they fit you. Make sure they won't rub your scratches in the wrong ways. In A Girl with the Hazel Eyes by Eric Ockpill. The eyes that looked back at her in the mirror lacked expression. Expression had died with her first scream. Therefore, all that had been was blackness. She bathed carefully but quickly. Each pass of the shower had washing the blood from her body, creating a light red stream that ran from her chest to her toes. She was never the most beautiful girl. She knew that. She stepped out of the shower and started the systematic self-appraisal in the mirror that it became an unconscious routine for her. She looked at her eyes. A clear hazel throwback from a relative she had no clue about. She studied them. One eye, swollen, almost shut. The other studied her with the same absent-minded interest in which she studied it. But th wa this wasn't the worst part. One time, he beat her so hard that he came home from work to find her laying on the ground. She was gasping for breath, looking towards the sky, begging God, take me now! He rushed her to the emergency room, where the doctor had told her her ribs had been broken. He asked her, how did you break your ribs? Silence had answered that question. He ran out of the room, citing important cases to attend to. Every time she came back from that emergency room, she'd stop at the door. She'd look through the windows, and if she could see him, she would think, oh, how much more. She would cry to herself every night, begging for him to stop, begging for the chance to have a normal life of a normal girl. He never let that happen. Every night, he'd thrust it into her. Every night, he'd hit her. Every night, she had to stare at that vodka bottle while he thrust it into her and she cried and he told her, No, you don't have the right to cry. She always kept silent. She thought this was a good price paid for her sister's safety. But part of her, she wished, she longed for the day that he would ever touch her sister. Because that day would be the day she broke her silence. She was glad she was home the night it happened. She heard her sister yelling as she walked through the door. She ran up the stairs. She cried as she was running. She ran as fast as she could. She walked into the room where that little nine-year-old was standing as he pushed her pink sundress up to her chest. She pushed him down. She grabbed, she grabbed the vase from where it lay on the counter and hit him. She hit him until she could not understand what parts of his face she was hitting. Till he looked like mush. Till his blood was all over the floor. She hit him until she remembered everything. She stabbed, she stabbed, she stabbed. She knew this would not be the last time, but she also knew he would not get out alive. 